Uh, thank you. First of all, thank you very much for inviting me to speak at this uh, seminar, which is so largely attended by so many uh, number theorists around the world, and hopefully not only number theorists. Right. So today I'm, I'm going to talk about approximation by algebraic numbers, and the main question for today would be to understand how well algebraic numbers of a bounded degree are distributed, or more exactly, uh, given given a real number psi, we want to understand how small can we make the difference psi minus L, alpha, where alpha runs through algebraic numbers of bounded degrees, so degree of alpha is at most m, and bounded height, so, uh, height of alpha is at most h. And here in, in this talk by height, we mean uh, the naive height of the minimal uh, polynomial of alpha, and uh, primitive minimal polynomial of alpha, so is a uh, the naive height of P alpha of X. Basically, the, uh, the maximum or absolute values of its coefficients. Right. OK. Uh, let's firstly start with some heuristics. What can we expect from, from this difference? So we, we know that there are. Uh, uh, around h to the power n plus one different polynomials of height at most h. Okay, and then with a bit of work, we can derive that there are uh, approximately the same amount of algebraic numbers uh, with, uh, with bounded height and uh, with bounded degree. So if we assume that all of them are equidistributed, are, are uniformly distributed, then we expect something like uh, psi minus alpha to be uh, smaller than h of alpha to the uh, power minus n minus one, probably with some constant. And that should, uh, should happen for infinitely many algebraic numbers. So this is our expectation from very brief, very rough heuristics. Okay. Uh, if you look a bit deeper into, into this question, we will we'll see that this heuristic Heuristics does not always work. For example, it does not work for algebraic numbers. Uh, for example, let's take an algebraic number psi of degree d at most n. Then uh, the classical Liouville's inequality gives us that psi minus alpha is always at least h of alpha to the power minus d, which is, as you can see, uh, this this. So this expression h of alpha to the power minus d is much bigger than h of alpha to the power minus n minus one. In some, in some sense, it shows that uh, algebraic numbers uh, do not like each other. If we have an algebraic number of small height, uh, then the, like the, the neighbors will be quite far apart from it. Okay? And because of this, uh, this, uh, this issue, uh, to be on the safe side, we usually assume that Xi is transcendental. So we don't consider uh, algebraic numbers of Xi. Okay. Right. Now let's make our, our problem more formal. Let's uh, define the, uh, the first uh, definite exponent for today. Uh, the quantity Wn star of Xi, which is the supremum of all numbers, positive numbers W star, such that the following inequality psi minus alpha is less than h to the power minus w star minus one has uh, solutions in algebraic numbers alpha of bounded degree, degree at most n and bounded height, h of alpha at most h for arbitrarily large values of h. So it should, it, it should, it, it should not necessarily have uh, solutions for all large values of h, but uh, it should have uh, solutions for some uh, a sequence of, of h which tends to infinity. Okay, then uh, if we if we translate our heuristics uh, into the uh, into the into this into this language, then uh, we we should get that uh, w n star of psi should be at most at least n at least n. And that's actually uh, 
something posed quite long ago that was firstly posed by Wersing in 1961, and now it's called the conjecture Wersing. So the conjecture is that uh, for any transcendental number of psi, double and star of psi is at least 10. Right. Now, before we, uh, uh, before we go into some proofs and some ideas, let's, let's have a look what, what is already known about this conjecture. First of all, this conjecture is known for small values of L. For n equals one, that's basically the Dirichlet theorem, the classical Dirichlet theorem. Yeah. So basically, we have uh, we, uh, we have psi minus p over q is always smaller than one over q squared. Yeah. So yeah. So double one star of, of psi is always at least one. So that's uh, basically the Richard theorem. So nothing, nothing, nothing difficult. But when n becomes bigger, uh, the problem becomes much harder. For n equals two, uh, this uh, conjecture is also verified by Davenport and Schmidt in 1967. However, for high values of n, nothing is known. So for the case n, uh, and the case n bigger than two is, is, is still open. Now let's let's uh, let's cons let's uh, let's have a look what what bounds what estimates for W and star of psi uh, we know for the moment. Uh, in his initial paper, Verzin in 1961 uh, proved that W and star of psi is at least n plus one over two, so it is at least something. Well, it's it's quite far from n, but but still it's at least n, n plus one over two. In 1969, uh, Springjuk uh, verified uh, verified the conjecture for almost all uh, real numbers psi. So basically, it means that if we have counterexamples to this conjecture, the Lebesgue's measure of, of of those counterexamples should be zero. So the set of counterexamples is very small. Then later. Bernick and Tishinka uh, made some improvements uh, to the lower bounds of Verzin. Uh, uh, namely, in 1993, uh, they, they showed uh, that uh, WN star of psi is at least n over 2 plus 2 minus something which tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. So they, they have a precise formula, but I, I, well, it, it doesn't matter. So it's quite technical. Right? But what does matter that we still have uh, n over two here. So asymptotics is still n over two, but uh, we win a little bit with a constant. Yeah? And just for, for, for the reference, uh, the, the W3 star of psi in their work is at least 2 to, uh, two to point 0.5, two and a half. No, actually not too good. Uh, I think the W3 star is, is 2.5 exactly. But yeah, but it's not uh, always rational, right? Later, Tishinka improved this bound again a little bit. So in two thousand and seven, uh, he showed that double and star of psi is at least n over two plus three minus something which tends to zero. And again, uh, for n equals three, uh, the uh, that lower bound gives us uh, two point seventy three and something. And yeah, if you if you look at all this uh, all these low bounds, you can see that we always have n over two. So the asymptotics in all these low bounds is n over two. And for a long time, uh, nothing better was known. So no no better estimates than or asymptotic estimate than n over two were known. Okay, I will I will. Uh, introduce our our result mine and uh, it's later where we beat this uh, this asymptotics but uh, for the moment let's let's not do this let's leave it to the end of this talk right now I want to I want to talk a little bit more about the ideas how to uh, well, what can be done how can we attack this problem how can we estimate the di distance between uh, a given real number and given rational number. Usually it is relatively hard to uh, mm, 
to study algebraic, the distribution of algebraic numbers themselves, and it is much easier to study the, the polynomials, the minimal polynomials. So we will introduce several more, uh, several more uh, different time exponents, which will be used later. Uh, so the first, the first exponent uh, describes how small can we make the values of polynomials at a given point. So that's namely W n of xi, or respectively W hat n of xi is defined as the supremum of all W's, real W's, uh, such that the following system of uh, inequalities so basically, main, the main one is this. The value of the polynomial at xi is at most x to the power minus w. And all the coefficients of that polynomial, except uh, possibly a zero, are between one and x, capital X. So if, if this system of inequalities has solutions in integers a zero and one and so on a n for arbitrarily large x, that gives us double again of xi. And if we require the system of inequalities to be true for all large x, then that gives us double and head of xi. Right, and, one, and, and we will need a dual version of, of these uh, this exponents. Uh, uh, so here we basically consider the, uh, the, the dual body to do the previous one. And, yeah, and we define the exponent uh, lambda n of xi and respectively lambda hat n of xi as a, su a supremum of all lambdas such that the following inequalities x0 times xi to the power i minus xi, all of those are smaller, are not bigger than x to the power, power minus lambda, and x0 is between one and, one and x. And again, if, if that happens, for some arbitrarily large values of x that gives us lambda n of xi. And if, if we require it to be true for all large values of x, that gives us lambda hat n of xi. Cool. So now we have five different different exponents. Right? And now let's, let's, uh, let's see what, what can be done with all of them. So we start with some basic ideas. Right. The most basic idea is if, if alpha is, is very close to xi, that, impl that immediately implies that the value of a minimal polynomial of alpha at this point xi is very small, is very close to zero, right? And well, that's not, uh, that's not something hard, right? So we, we, we can estimate the yeah, absolute value of p alpha of xi as xi minus alpha times the derivative of this, of this polynomial at some point between xi and alpha, right? So this, this is just the basic kind of calculus, right? And uh, yeah, that can be estimated as h of alpha times xi minus alpha, right? And if we go, go write it down in terms of different exponents, that, that gives us uh, this, this inequality. Wn of xi is always at least wn star of xi. That's of course good, but uh, we need lower bounds for double n star, not upper bounds. And uh, so we need, it's, we, we need to get, uh, we want to get the inverse implication. If, if the value of polynomial is small, does it imply that psi and alpha are close to each other? And that inverse implication is only true if somehow we can guarantee that the, the, the derivative of that polynomial is, is large. Otherwise, we cannot guarantee that. So if you, if you have something like that, then the inverse is also true. But uh, for, uh, <coughs> for arbitrary polynomial, we can't, there, there is no way for us to guarantee this. And then for in, in, all, in all the methods, in all the, in the, all the works of, of, of various, mathematicians who tried to attack this problem, the biggest challenge was to construct uh, or to, to, to show the existence of one or several polynomials p, uh, which are very small at point xi and satisfy some other, some other conditions. Uh, 
such that well, that guarantees that uh, one of the roots of that polynomial, of one of those polynomials, is, is close enough to xi. So that's like the biggest challenge, and that's just a very brief and vague idea what, what we want to achieve. Okay. Uh, so, Dimitri, we have a question in the audience. Um, could you repeat the, the definition of Wn of Xi? Wn. Wn of Xi. It's here. So, it's, uh, it, it measures how, how small we can make the value of a polynomial. Is it, is it okay or I can, I can repeat? Is it okay? I just don't know who asked the question. <laughs> Uh, yes, that's good enough. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. Where did we stop? Uh, somewhere here, right? Yeah. All right. So uh, now let's uh, let's think about how can we make one polynomial small at at a given real point psi. That's that's not a hard problem. Right, that's just a con con consequence of uh, classical Minkowski's theorem. So for any, for, uh, for an arbitrary uh, capital H bigger than zero, or bigger than zero, uh, there exists uh, a polynomial P such that its value, uh, with integer coefficients, such that its value at Xi is less than H to the power minus M, and all its coefficients, the absolute value of all these coefficients are at most h. That's just a, a classical Minkowski theorem, a convex body Minkowski theorem, right? And in terms of, uh, in terms of the Wefferton uh, exponents, that means that Wn hat of xi is at least m, and uh, also Wn of xi, which is also, which is always at least Wn hat of xi, is also at least m. We can do the same for dual, dual body. So we can apply Minkowski theorem for, for dual body and show that uh, the following system of inequalities, A0 xi to the power i minus ai, absolute value, less than capital H to the power minus one over n, for all i's between one and n, and A0 is at most h, that this, uh, a system of inequalities also has a non-zero integer solution in, in values a0 and 1 and so on a n for all values of h and that gives us that lambda n head of xi is, at, is always at least 1 over n and lambda n of xi is at least lambda n head of xi. So at least if we, if, we, if we just want to estimate the value of polynomial or if you want to estimate uh, lambdas or like for, for, for dual body, that's not a, that's not a hard problem. The, the hardest problem is then to estimate, to, to, to somehow uh, uh, derive the information about uh, W and star. Okay, now I want to discuss uh, several ideas of, uh, of, uh, of from, from, the, from, from the works of Wersing and then, uh, and then uh, of other mathematicians. Actually, in, in, in his paper, Verzi has many, had, had many ideas, uh, many relations between uh, different effort and exponents. I will, I will discuss only two of them, which will in some way be used later. So the, the first idea is, as, as I also already mentioned in the previous slide, we can always get a sequence of polynomials, uh, P of Xi, which are Uh, smaller than h to the uh, power minus w n of xi. Yeah, that's just by definition of plus epsilon. Right? Plus epsilon. That's just by definition of w n of xi. Of, uh, of, of xi. And by uh, by some easy tricks, we can we can uh, guarantee that p of xi is irreducible. And then by by working with its discriminant, we can we can derive we can derive that it's closest, it's, it's closest root, 
the side it has uh, is uh, that ex uh, for, for its closest true to the uh, psi, psi minus alpha is always at most the value of the polynomial times the height of the polynomial to the power n minus two. So here I skip all the details. I just I just provide the idea, right? Actually, this uh, this number alpha is not necessarily uh, real. It, it's it's a complex number. Right, and then uh, from, from this inequality, p of xi is less than h of p to the, uh, to the power minus w, we derive that xi minus alpha is smaller than h of p to the power minus w plus m minus two, right? Uh, after that, we use some tricks uh, to replace uh, complex number by a real number. So if, if, if alpha is, is not real, then we have two conjugate uh, roots, which are very close to psi, and then we can replace P of psi by its derivative, and its derivative again has a, uh, has a root which is very close to psi. So it's, it's some trick, uh, so some trick uh, which, uh, which ensures that uh, we can find uh, real algebraic number alpha with all, the, with all the same properties. So xi minus alpha is smaller than h of p to the power minus w plus n minus two. Yeah, and finally the conclusion from, from, from this idea is that uh, we have w n star of xi is at least w n, uh, w n of xi minus n plus one. In principle, this, this uh, low bound usually does not give us a uh, good low bound, right? For example, if, well, we, we, we know that WN of Xi is at least N, and if it is N, then we just get WN star of Xi is at least one, which is, uh, which is rather weak low bound. But uh, if WN of Xi appears to be very high, then it, it, it gives something reasonable. And also this method shows what can we do, what, what result we can derive if we consider only one polynomial, we, uh, we, which is small at psi. So possibly this, this, this factor can be improved, but not too much. Now the next idea, again due to version, was instead considering one polynomial, which is small at psi. He considered two polynomials. So one polynomial P1 comes from the definition of double N of Xi. So we can always find such a polynomial that P1 of Xi is smaller than H to the power minus double N plus epsilon. And then by reducing H a little bit, a little bit, a little bit and applying Minkowski theorem, we can find another polynomial P2 of Xi, which is uh, which is also small at psi, right? P2 of psi is at most h to the power minus n. And we can, uh, we can guarantee, uh, again, by, by doing some tricks, that they are co-prime. They don't share any, any root. And uh, after we have two polynomials of, of this form and considering some careful consideration of the resultant, uh, we, we, we can, we can uh, derive that they, they exist the root alpha of their product, or basically L, the root of one of those polynomials, which <clears throat> gives the following low bound for double N star of size. So I don't want to give uh, all the details because uh, they're technical and uh, I just want to give uh, an idea. So we, we get W N star of psi is at least uh, the minimum of these two numbers, n and double n of psi plus one over two. And yeah, and, uh, and this gives our low bound n plus one over two, and that is the result of version. Okay. Uh, yeah, and the conclusion from, from here is that the double n star of psi is at least, yeah, n plus one over two. Right. Now, uh, since version, uh, various people tried to make some improvements into this idea. 
The first improvement I want to discuss is due to Bourgeois and Schleichitz. That's uh, in, uh, that was written in 2016, but the, the improvement itself is not too deep, I would say. Yeah. Uh, so if, we, if you look closer to, to the initial idea of, of, of resin, we can find two prime polynomials. And for the first one, we have the same estimate as before, P1 of psi is at most h to the minus double n plus epsilon. That's because of the definition of double n of epsilon of psi. But for the second polynomial, we can, we can do a little bit better. We can guarantee that it's smaller than h to the power minus double hat of n. Uh, and uh, plus epsilon. And that's due to the definition of double in head. So if double in head of psi is n, then we don't have any improvement. But uh, in some cases we can, we can, yeah, if double in head is bigger, strictly bigger than n, we do have an improvement. And then again, if we apply all the same, all the same arguments of versing, we have, <coughs> an improved low bound for double and star oxide in terms of double and head. So it's, it's now bigger than the minimum of these two numbers, W hat N of Xi and W hat N of Xi minus N plus what we had before, double N Xi plus one over two, right? Or this can be rewritten as the following formula. So I probably have it. Oh no, I don't have it. Okay, so it's three halves double hat and psi minus n plus one half. Right. And yeah, and later we will we will use this lower bound. So let's let's uh, let's have it here. Also, Bernick and Tishinka in 1993 and 2007 also uh, use similar ideas, which I'm not going to reproduce. I just want to say that they chose uh, polynomials pi of x in, in a more delicate way and considered various cases for the uh, absolute values and for absolute values of the derivatives and that, well, and all, all of those help them to reach to, to reach this, uh, this low bound, which is still, yeah, which is still n over 2 plus 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 something bounded. So uh, com uh, compared to the initial uh, bound of resin, we improve by basically uh, two and a half, yeah, the by the constant two and a half. Okay, so that's these other ideas of resin. Now I also want to, um, uh, to talk about the ideas of Davenport and Schmidt. The first idea of Davenport and Schmidt, so they also tried to, to, uh, to attack uh, Bredding conjecture. And yeah, and their first idea was to construct polynomials P such that P of Xi is much smaller than the derivative P dash of Xi. And this idea worked for N equals two. So uh, they, they, they proved the following theorem let uh, L and M be two nearly, uh, linearly independent linear forms of three variables, then, and actually they can be arbitrary line, uh, linearly independent forms, then they exist infinitely many non-zero integer vectors A such that uh, the absolute value of L of A is at most <clears throat> with some absolute constant, then the absolute value of M of A times the length of a to the power minus three. Now, if we if it's in, in, in substitute in place of L of a, we substitute the value of a polynomial, which is which can be considered as a linear form uh, in terms of its coefficients. And for M of a, we consider, we take uh, the value, uh, it's, its derivative at psi, then, this inequality basically implies that W2 star of Xi is at least two. Okay. Uh, and of course, after, after you get this theorem, it's tempting to, to generalize it to an arbitrary N. And of course, Davenport and Schmidt tried to do that. And uh, unfortunately, 
for unfortunately they 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 realized that it cannot be generalized to high values of n. So uh, basically, they proved the following result uh, in, the, in the next year, in 1968, they proved that for any n at least three, one can construct linear forms L of A, M of A, such that the inverse inequality is true. So L of A is at least with some absolute constant, uh, M of A, absolute value of M of A times the length of A to the power minus three. So yeah. So for this, uh, the, this result, the required result is not, uh, is not true anymore for arbitrary linear forms L and M. Of course, maybe if one uses the specific linear forms and we have specific linear forms, yeah, one is a value of polynomial, another one is a value of, of, of derivative, maybe if we use specific uh, linear, uh, linear forms, maybe something can be done, but uh, the, the general result is not true. And yeah, and, 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 and since then, this idea, uh, well, I, I, uh, I, at least I, di I didn't see that anyone pursued this idea any further. Right. Then they have uh, another idea, idea two. Uh, they, in, instead of dealing with polynomials P of Xi themselves, they looked at the dual case. So they consider two uh, convex bodies dual to each other. So the first one is, 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 is this. So it consists of, of points, of uh, real points such that x0 plus xi x1 plus and so on plus xi to the power n xn is at most y to the power minus n. And, yeah, and all xi's are at most y. That's the first the first uh, convex body and it's dual, dual to that convex body is, is this one. So that's uh, the set of all points X and plus one dimensional points, points X such that X zero times Xi to the power I minus Xi is at most Y to the power minus one over N and the absolute value of X zero is at most Y. So we have these two dual convex bodies and what is good for them about them? We have, uh, we can relate their successive minima. Uh, we have this smaller duality theorem. Uh, so if we, uh, so yeah, uh, for, for us, uh, two uh, are uh, two successive minima are important. The first successive minima for the first body, convex body, lambda one of y, and. Uh, n plus first uh, uh, successive minima for the dual for the for the dual convex body for c star of y, which is the lambda n plus one star of y, and by Mahler duality theorem, they are related by the following equation. So their product is uh, is bounded from above and from below by some absolute constants. So it's comparable with one. And what does it give us? So what we can do is by, by the definition of lambda and hat of Xi, yeah, uh, the following system of inequalities, yeah, so A zero Xi to the power I minus A I smaller than X to the power minus lambda and hat minus some epsilon slightly less than X to the power minus lambda and hat and A zero is, is less than X this system does not have solutions for some arbitrary large values of x and that gives us the uh, upper bound right the upper bound for uh, for lambda one of, of oh sorry lower bound for, for lambda one of y so uh, fr from there we can derive the lower bound on lambda one of y for some values for some large values of y, and then that uh, will through this duality theorem that will give us some upper bounds on the lambda n plus one star of y for some values of y. And now, now uh, we need to we need to understand what's 
What does this mean? It means that we have n plus one linearly independent polynomials, pi, such that their values are rather small. Uh, so we, we, can, we can derive, yeah, so we, the, the, their values, pi p, uh, of xi, all, for all of those, for all of those independent polynomials, the values are at most h to the power minus one over lambda hat n of xi, and the heights are at most stage. So we have n plus one linear independence polynomials p. And uh, yeah, other questions? No? No. And after that, uh, because we have so many linearly independent polynomials, uh, we can carefully choose the linear, uh, the linear combination so that uh, the value of that linear combination is still small. So p of xi is still smaller than h to the power minus one over our lambda of head of xi. But the, the derivative is rather high. p dash of xi is at least h. And uh, the conclusion from, from this method is that w n star of xi is always at least one over Lambda, uh, lambda and head of psi. So that uh, gives us the lower bound for WN of star of psi in terms of lambda and head of psi. And I think by, by the time uh, Davenport and Schmidt uh, found this, uh, this relation, uh, it looked uh, this way, looked quite promising. And even now, if we find some good upper bound for lambda and head of psi, that will give us uh, some good low bound for, and maybe some improvement for double and star of psi. But, uh, but uh, at the moment, we, we know quite little about lambda and head of psi. And that's, uh, that's actually another interesting open question about this uh, Lafontaine exponents. We actually do not know, do not even know uh, if n is at least three, are there transcendental numbers xi such that lambda hat n of xi is strictly bigger than one over n? We do not know. And of course, if we, if the answer to this question is no, then we solve for as conjecture. Yeah, if there are no, if, if, if lambda n hat of xi is always at most one over n, then double n star of xi is always at least 10, right? But the conjecture is, that the answer is yes. The conjecture, the answer is yes. But uh, as I said, not, no one knows. No one knows for sure. Right. Uh, up, to, up to now, the best general upper bound for lambda and head of Xi is due to Laurent. I'm afraid I don't remember in which year he got it. But uh, he got that uh, lambda and head of xi is at most uh, n over two uh, uh, upper integer, upper, upper, upper integer value of n over two uh, to the power minus one. And if we, if we, if we take this, this lower lower bound and substitute it there, we still get double n star of xi is at least n over two plus something bounded. So it's, it's not an improvement. Right, of, of known results. Right, and now, now I think it's time to introduce our, how much time do I have? Our, our result, uh, in my mind and uh, from 2018. So we actually managed to beat the asymptotics uh, n over two. So we show that if n is at least four and xi is a transcendental, then w n star of xi is always bigger than n divided by square root of three, which is of course bigger than n over two asymptotically. And <clears throat> moreover, if we, if we consider this, uh, the, the the ratios double and star of psi divided by n, then the limb soup of these ratios is even bigger. 
it's it's at least some uh, delta which is uh, approximately 0 0.6408 and so on and so forth and here you can see the formula for this delta but you don't have to remember it i, I don't i don't remember it it's it comes from the proof and it's very technical so it's 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 some it's some delta which which is bigger than one root of three uh, right now i'm i will i will I will give some well, a, a little insight in, into the proof, but very little insight uh, because, firstly, I don't have time, and uh, it becomes too technical. But uh, just just very general ideas behind the proof, right? So we actually use a, a combination of the previous bounds and clever clever links between them. So if, if lambda n hat of xi is, is small, then we use uh, Davenport and Schmidt estimate, which is, uh, let me write it down for, for you to remember, which is uh, Wn star xi is at least one over lambda n hat of xi. So if lambda n hat of xi is small, we use this one, but if it is not small, we get we get an additional information about uh, uh, yeah about about psi. So in, in that case, uh, we we get a reasonable lower estimate on the, on one one of the of these different exponents w n hat of psi w n minus one hat of psi and so on w n minus m hat of psi. And after that, after we get this reasonable low bound, whatever it is, we use uh, bijot schleich estimate, which is, uh, let me remind you, uh, here, which is this, double n star of psi is at least three halves w hat of psi minus n plus one half. Right. Yeah, so he, uh, here, uh, uh, what, what we do, we define the sequence of best approximations to psi, psi squared, and so on, psi to the n. Basically, we, we take the, the, the minimal possible vectors xi such that this value, which is a maximum of, uh, of, of xi0 psi to the j minus xij, uh, which minimizes that maximum. Right, and uh, from from the definition of lambda and hat, we get this estimate. That L of x i is always at most h of x i plus one to the power of minus lambda and hat of x i. So that's a standard est estimate. Um, uh, it's it's not hard, but yeah, but I'm, I'm I'm leaving all the details. I'm, I'm skipping all the details. Right. And after that, we use the following uh, crucial lemma, which is, uh, and, and the ideas of this lemma come from uh, the work of Laurent. So if, if lambda and hat is, is uh, relatively big, yeah, uh, then, and, and, and you remember, we have, we have vector, uh, minimal vector x i zero, x i one, up to x i n. Yeah. Then from if uh, from from this vector we can choose the 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 set the the the, the collection of, of smaller vectors x i zero x i one and so on x i n minus m. Then x i one x i two up to x i n minus m plus one, and, and so on. So each time we kind of shift right. We take this one, then we take the next one and, and so on and so forth, right? So all of those are linearly independent, right? And as soon as we know that all of those are linearly independent, we, we know, uh, we, we can estimate the, uh, yeah, uh, then we, we can tra translate this, uh, this uh, statement uh, that the, the following system of inequalities has M plus one linearly independent solutions for all large X. And that gives us uh, 
So it has a, uh, I think it's, it gives us uh, an, a low, uh, is it low bound or upper bound? I always forget. So it, it gives us the estimate for n plus first successive minima for, for some value of y, for, and actually for all large values of y, of a dual body. Right. And uh, since we have we have so many small values, it gives us upper upper bound. So upper bound upper bound on on on, on this on, on this uh, m plus first uh, successive minima. And if we have an upper bound on this uh, successive minima, we can from there we can use the Minkowski second uh, theorem about successive minima and get the lower bound. So we, we get lower bound for the for the biggest. Uh, successive minimum from there, and we get some. Uh, yeah, so we we, we get uh, uh, that gives us the uh, the lower bound for for this successive minimum, and that, that gives uh, that, that's the, the exact formula, but uh, it doesn't. Uh, you, you, you don't have to remember it, and. From there, we use a Marley duality theorem again to get an upper bound for for the first successive minimum of 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 of, 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 say, of c of y. So we, we know we now come to from the dual body to, to the initial body. Yeah, and after after doing all of this, we get the lower bound for double hat and minus m of psi because it's related with the first excessive minimum right and and, and the rest is just uh, uh, just as uh, uh, i'll say just quite straightforward so from there after after we have low bound for for w and minus m hat we derive low bound so we, after we have low bound for this we derived the low bound for double and star psi, which which appears to be some complicated expression of lambda and head of psi, right? And, and and then we combine two things together. So we have this this formula for small values lambda and head. This formula for large values of lambda and head, and then that's that becomes the the problem from from analysis right we need to optimize optimize this uh, this right hand side and we optimize it firstly we optimize it by choosing the right the right uh, value of lambda hat so we, we want to uh, minimize this expression over all lambda hat of psi and after that we maximize it by uh, by m that's uh, that, that's uh, something technical but rather straightforward, yeah. And 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 that gives us finally uh, in the end that gives us the, the result that double uh, star of psi is, uh, is is bigger than n over root of three. Yeah, I hope I hope that gave you at least some idea. I'm, I'm, I I I don't think you. <laughs> I was clear enough to explain all the details, but at least I hope that uh, you you got to grasp some ideas for, from the from this proof. Yeah, and yeah, and thank you very much for for your attention.